Hello everyone, I'm Faith Bautista and you're watching Owning a Piece of America. My guest today is the founder and executive director of Oasis Center International, an arts nonprofit organization serving the low to moderate income youth of Southern California, especially Santa Ana. Welcome to the program, Jim. And thank you so much for what you do for these kids. Tell me about the vision of Oasis. The vision of Oasis is to inspire a generation of youth to fulfill their highest level of life achievements through discovery and development of their inherent gifts, which would be arts. And you founded this organization? I sure did. Why? So about four years ago, um, I founded this organization. Just really, it was in benefit of searching myself. And by serving the community, I found that the power of arts is beyond just beauty but it has power to um, align children with their life purpose or life goals. And so the way that we got started was by implementing a pilot program with 50 students, and we will work with architects to implement the architectural design program. So from 50 students over a three year period, we have impacted over 1,000 plus students in Santa Ana and Orange County area. So this nonprofit organization, nonprofit is always hard to operate without funders. Mm -hmm. How do you able to convince corporate America to support your nonprofit? Mm -hmm. I believe that corporate America has social responsibility. But in addition to that, I think um, we need to be aware of this uh, community conscious responsibility. And in that, when you're able to engage with corporations that have uh, that kind of sane heart, to serve the community in terms of investing in community development, you're able to partner with them. Well, my understanding for like financial institutions, for example, they only fund financial literacy. Mm -hmm. How can arts and culture be part of financial literacy? Well, um, I do believe it takes some education on both parts, also the uh, regulators, also the bankers uh, themselves. But first we have to accept the fact that financial literacy can only be effective and powerful when the recipients actually receive it and they want it. So what we're doing with arts and culture is to inspire youth to uh, have a reason as to why they want resources like financial literacy. So when you're able to reset people's paradigm in terms of uh, understanding the resources as to why they need it, um, that's when you start having impact. And so when we talk to financial institutions, we make sure that they're not giving for the purpose of getting a check on their CRA um, you know, um, test, but really to understand it's more than that. It, they're really bringing changes to a community where it's underserved and there's lack of resources and access for the youth, especially. So like what kind of workshops are you uh, conducting at the well, center? We are an arts nonprofit organization, so we are uh, heavily focused on visual arts and performing arts. And in addition, we also have media arts programming. However, um, when we work with partners like banks, you know, we want to make sure that we are partnering with them. So uh, we're able to implement such programs as financial literacy, um, age appropriate. Okay. And by the way, folks, Jin does not have just one degree, but two. You have a degree in psychology and business management. So you have a unique view on how and why these workshops really works. And change the children mm -hmm. from having low esteem to feeling like they can be anything you aspire to be. Um, tell me more about that and, and I also know you're a daughter of a diplomat. I mean, come on, Jin. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, let me just uh, take a few steps back as to how I got involved in this nonprofit work is um, I am a daughter of a retired diplomat of Republic of Korea. And when I was growing up, I lived in many different countries, but specifically, specifically I want to note India. Um, as you know, India is a very art rich, very culture rich nation. And pretty much everywhere you go, you see the ancient you know, remnants and that you just get immersed in history itself. And that's how I spent my 80s, you know, when I was growing up, going and going and attending the, uh, at that time it was called American Embassy School. Um, and arts to me was a natural environment. You know, I appreciated arts. I also saw the power of arts where it transformed people, their lives and also their outlook. 
And in that, I thought, or I believe that it was a natural thing for an individual to experience arts as part of their lives. But um, as I uh, conducted my adult life here in, um, uh, in America, um, I very soon realized the educational system was very different and um, not that people do not appreciate the arts but because of the uh, funding cuts in the public school system the first thing that really was to be right. eliminated was the arts education and how I felt was that uh, uh, as a nation, we are missing out on the very important part of education that produces creativity in young individuals. And so um, I wanted to establish a nonprofit that fills the gap while we wait for the government and we wait for the institutions to, you know, um, to put legislature in order in order to change the um, academic system. I think in the meantime, there's a lot of things that we could do. So that's how this nonprofit was formed. Okay. We're going to be right back after the commercial, but Jin, you know, being a Korean, um, being a woman, convincing your husband for you to do these things, convincing the corporate America. Let's talk about that after the commercial, because it's just hard to imagine that a Korean lady can make a difference in arts and culture and serving the Latino community. So we will be right back after this commercial. Everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean. Why are homeowners talking about counselors from NAAC? Well, you know, because uh, through NAAC and uh, with the help of Faith Bautista, I'm not able to have a piece of America. As a housing counselor, I will help you budget and get a clear picture of your finances. I will help you understand your credit report and help you improve your score. I will help you through your hardship and work with your lender to get a loan modification. For free housing counseling, call 1-800-920-6248. What do you think it would be like to teach? Chances are, you have no idea. Teachers today are breaking down obstacles, finding innovative ways to instill old lessons, proving that greatness can be found in everyday places, and that you don't need to be famous to be unforgettable. That's what it's like to teach. Welcome back. You're watching Owning a Piece of America. I'm with Jin Sung, the Executive Director of the Oasis Center International here in Southern California. Jin, can you give us some of your remarkable stories, transformation that your kids are experiencing at your center? Mm -hmm. So as you know, Faith, we're working with low to moderate income youth. And these are children that are challenged generally with poverty, generally with lack of mentorship, just a lot of the societal challenges that we face. Um, but they're exposed to the arts. And so what we have found in our La Habra program, for instance, we were housed in the Community uh, Arts Center. And in that theater, these children were so amazed. They live in that vicinity, and the past years have never visited that, that location. Amazing. And they were just walking by every day thinking, am I ever going to visit that place? But of course they did. And so as, you, as they walked into their classrooms, she just seen their faces light up. Like, I get to be in this space where the professionals perform and I get to learn how to tap dance, I get to draw. It's just been remarkable to see like sparkle in their eyes. Um, just recently, last week, we had the Children's Arts right. Festival in Santa Ana. Right. And um, there is this project that we uh, launched along with our partnership with um, Casanova Pendrill and also Long Beach Museum of Art and of course our Oasis students. And um, the gist of the project was to um, incorporate virtual reality technology along with our master artists telling, showing them and teaching them how to paint, spray paint and bring in acrylic painting together in conjunction with what was exhibited in the museum. And in that just few minutes of like uh, um, the screening, you see the 
faces of these children just lit up oh. seeing their work in that museum. You know, Jen, we got to do more of this. Yes, and we do. How do we encourage corporate America to put some of their philanthropy dollar? And I know you're a member of NDC. Can you talk about that and that how how helps other nonprofits? Mm -hmm. NDC stands for National. Um, Diversity Coalition, as you know, and you know, we're doing some amazing work. It's a rather young uh, coalition, but not really young for the fact that NAAC has been doing this work for at least 10 years in the past. And so what we uh, aim to do with Corporate America as we are journeying as a coalition is to really awake their consciousness in and uh, in terms of minority rights, in terms of low to moderate income needs through housing or through... Is there a need of, of coalition? Oh, absolutely. Why? I mean, you would think California is already a progressive uh, state, United States. Is this the organization that has to ask the corporations to do good things? I think everybody wants to be responsible, um, especially the government will do their part. The corporate America is trying to do their part. But there is a huge gap mm -hmm. uh, between the actual implementation of what is needed on the ground level. And so as grassroots organizations um, gather like us, um, I think we, we really become a voice for the minorities that don't have a voice or uh, that voice that's not loud enough. So, so give the audience, if you're really making a difference, just give one exciting example of the, the um, advocacy that National Diversity Coalition has done that made a difference. Mm -hmm. That made a huge difference uh -huh. for Oasis, for instance. Um, when we uh, understood the situation about mergers and acquisition of CIT and One West Bank, I mean, everybody has a different opinion as to uh, perhaps the outcome of it. However, we are a huge proponent of and um, support for this merger and it has already happened but what's even more impressive is the corporate um, accountability of what they committed to doing before the merger and after and so we are a recipient not only in terms of the grants that they uh, provide for the low to moderate income youth but also understanding where they stand in terms of um, home ownership for the low to moderate income communities and what kind of programs they want to implement. I do believe that when we have responsible corporate citizens like um, CIT Bank, I think we just would have a, a much successful and a grander scheme of corporate America and not so, general. So if people want to look at the NDC, I think they can look at the nationaldiversitycoalition.org to learn more about it. In, we still have one, one minute and a half. Korean, um, Korean banks serving Korean community only, being a Korean. Is it culturally why we have Korean banks, specific banks for specific community? And is that still the right thing to do? I don't know if it's the right thing to do. I, I do believe it's a, a natural progression of growth of a business. And so when they were really focused and having um, Korean-based customers, I think they just grew in that, you know, arms and legs from that uh, environment. But I think as they grew to certain level of uh, revenue and um, profits, they have to look beyond their four walls or their community. And now that they are not just serving just the Korean um, communities, but really um, a diverse community in that when you look at the face of America, it is very diverse. Right, and you know, we all have to do our expertise. And I respect Korean banks. I respect Korean community because you guys are outstanding minority group actually. So more power to you and Jin, continue doing great work for the kids. They are our future. The more we can help you in encouraging that, the better off our country would be. You're really making a dreams come true for these children, Jin, and making their future brighter. And if one, in 10 seconds, give me a quick advice for the people to do for your organization. Oasis is creating a movement, and especially as we're creating a crowdfunding movement for our vision, we'd like everybody to visit www.oasiscenterintl.org and join us. Thank you so much, Jen, for being here and doing what you do at the Oasis Center for the Kids. You really make them believe that their dreams will come true. Thank you so much. Owning a Piece of America presents Lifestyle with Asian Journal. My name is RJ Oriel. 
I was born in Los Angeles, educated in San Francisco, and worked in New York. Traveling is my job, and writing is my passion. I am moving to the Philippines to work as the editor-in-chief of Bullock Bay Magazine. It's a magazine dedicated to exploring the beauty, culture, and modernization of the Philippines. To connect Bullock Bayans to the Philippines is a task I must complete, a challenge I must accept, a new world I must discover. First off, discover the secrets of Sonia's Garden. Sonia's Garden is near the vicinity of Tagaytay City. It is located at Barangay Buck Estate, Afonso Cavite. They take pride in giving people an amazing and private experience around the bushes and lushes of Sonia's Garden. So finally made it to Sonia's Garden in Tagaytay. I've heard so much great, so many great things about this from my family and friends back home. So finally here. Uh, excited to see what we can do here. Eat. Hi, good morning, Archie. Hi. Welcome to Sonia's Garden. How are you? Thank you. Hello. Good morning. So, um, how yeah, did finally you find made us? it. <laughs> finally made it to Sonia's Garden. I've heard um, so many great things about this place. Yes, we family. have here. We have here the spa. Yes. And, uh, and we have the apothecary. Apothecary is a personal care product. Okay. And what we use in the spa is also in the apothecary. Excellent. Would you like to take a look? Absolutely. Let's do it. Sonia's Garden welcomed me with a simple yet unique ambiance. It gave me this feeling of relaxing bliss that's hard to find. All right, great. This is the apothecary, so uh, this looks amazing. Come in. <laughs> great. Oh, it smells nice. Wow. Uh, so this is our personal care products. We have some uh, soaps. We have oil. We have uh, mm. assorted uh, tea as well. This must be like a woman's paradise too. <laughs> <laughs> Great. And men as well. And men as well, of course. Yeah, the sabone. Nice. Oh, it smells lovely in here. Excellent. We have here a uh, linen uh, spray. Oh, so you guys yeah. make your own? Yes. Wow, oh, excellent. Wow. Very and nice. And these are organic as well. It's organic? Yes. Excellent. Wow. I might have to get some of these things, especially linen. Yeah, mm -hmm. the linen spray. If you so. like uh, dogs, if you have some uh, pets, you mm -hmm. can have. We also have here. Uh, we make stuff for pets too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very fun. nice. Wow, it's so oh, amazing. By the way. Uh, Yes. Would you like to take a look? This is our favorite finds. This house yeah, over here, you wow. Want to check it out. I'm just admiring all the beautiful flowers and plants you have here. So many beautiful colors. It's amazing. Oh, the way you landscape so, this place is great, yes. Thank you. Sonia's Garden Soothing Spa offers a range of services that are sure to satisfy all your pampering needs. It spoils you from head to toe. Ah, nice. It's time to get some zen. Ready for a much needed foot massage. After all the, every morning I go running, so these, these feet of mine always take a pounding. So it's good to keep your feet happy. <sighs> Sonia's garden is amazing. The foot, the foot massage is just spectacular. Uh, it's good to take care of your feet. Really, really important to take care of your feet, but this feels amazing. So this is your cottage. Welcome to Lavender. Oh, wow. This is your cottage. My own cottage? Yes. Wow. Enjoy your stay. Thank you, Miss Evie. Thank you. Okay, I'll enjoy this. I gotta take a mental note. This, this is something that like a uh, good picture of having eventually when I have a family. Uh, yeah, so you get a sense of the Filipino aesthetic with the. Uh, it's a lot of wood, super colonial kind of, but it's peaceful. Great scene of like the trees. This is wow. Can you imagine waking up to that? 
Nice. The thing with uh, this resort, it's just like completely different. Uh, they really try to keep that cultural history alive, and this is in Tagaytay. There's no uh, nearby like beach or anything. Maybe Batangas, I think, but this is just. Uh, I could really, I could put, if I stayed here a month, I would probably cut out like the Great American Novel or Philippine Novel, but maybe, or at least write a novel. Yeah, definitely. They have way too many beds. This is too big for one person. Wow. The beauty of its cottages and rooms reflect that of the simple country lifestyle which Sonia's garden aims to portray. The doors to this serene sanctuary open as guests wish to stay longer in the arms of this calming garden. Its uniquely styled cottages bring back the long lost art of conversation as guests do nothing but talk to one another instead of surfing the internet. It is indeed a special place to rediscover your inner self and share it with the ones closest to you. So I just finished hitting up the spa, got a facial, got an amazing foot massage. Now I'm gonna wrap up my day at Sonia's Garden with uh, their amazing dinner that I heard is spectacular. Probably catch the sunset because it's an amazing view down there and then uh, call it a night and enjoy the, the cottage. From fashion to planes, from retail to real estate, from energy to rail, from healthcare to technology. CIT serves clients across a wide variety of industries. We help fuel businesses with commercial lending, leasing, and treasury management services. They in turn add value, add jobs, make a difference. CIT, put knowledge to work. Please, is everybody. Light check. One, two, one, two. Everything looks good on our end. And lights. Come alive with the forest. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Why are homeowners talking about counselors from NAAC? Well, you know, because uh, through NAAC and uh, with the help of Faith Bautista, I'm not able to have a piece of America. As a housing counselor, I will help you budget and get a clear picture of your finances. I will help you understand your credit report and help you improve your score. I will help you through your hardship and work with your lender to get a loan modification. For free housing counseling, call 1-800-920-6248. Last Tagai Thai destination. Have an appetite booster at Josephine Restaurant. Josephine Restaurant is located at General Aguinaldo Highway, Maharlika West, Tagai Thai. It was announced as Kalakbai Awards Restaurant of the Year by the Department of Tourism for its appetizing and world-class cuisine. Tourists come to Josephine not only to feast on its flavorful dishes, they also come here to feast their eyes on its scenic views. From the restaurant's balcony, you can have a glimpse of Ta'al Volcano, one of the many reasons why people love to spend their time here. I'm here with, uh, hey, Mr. Alfonso. How are you? I'm good, good. Excellent, excellent. So I'm joined by uh, Mr. Alfonso here. He's the general manager of Josephine's. And uh, Josephine's has been in your family for a long time. For almost 50 years now. Yeah, 50 years. Started by your... My uh, grandmother, Josephine. Josephine. 1966. And this is what, the second location? This or is the, uh, the last branch that we developed. The last 1995. Mm -hmm. 1995. So you've noticed that uh, this place is so packed all the time with like foreigners and locals. Mm -hmm. And I came here because bulalo is actually one of my favorite dishes. Oh, I have a challenge. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, Tagaytay is known for their bulalo, and yes. this is actually the best place to get it here at Joseph Pizza. Tagaytay is uh, famous for uh, the dance <laughs> Yeah, it is. And, uh, so and we have a challenge, challenge for you. Okay. This is a list that you have to buy at the market. Yes, okay. For the bulalo. Oh, okay. Oh, we got the secret recipe here, but I won't say it. <laughs> for Josephine's world famous, yeah, world famous and national world famous uh, bulalo, which is great. Okay, let's do this. I'll cook it here. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. Bulalo is one of the famous local foods here in Tagaytay. Folks say that it's the cool climate that got them hooked on this recipe. A bowl of hot bulalo in a cold weather, who wouldn't want that?
Yes, I am. Bolello? It's rock and roll, yeah. Okay. This is everything um, we need. This cool. is JR, Chief Cook. JR. Your mentor today. Hey, sir. Hi. Okay, great. Oh, cool. We have an apron here. <laughs> okay. Great. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right, so we'll be back in about... Yep, <laughs> I'm, after. I'll be done. Yeah. I'll be done. Okay. It should be very tasty. <laughs> okay, thank you. To create your very own bulolo, these are the ingredients you will need. Cooking oil, beef for bulolo, hechai, corn, pepper, banana, salt, onions, celery, string beans, and a potato. So uh, let's turn on the stove. Boom. Okay. Yeah, we'll put a little bit of oil. So we're gonna get this to a, a good boil and then we're gonna kick off with the, the onions. We got our onions. Onions, don't forget your onions. We'll put our celery in. Your, uh, your soup area. Fresh water. Boom. So we put our broth in already. So we want that to come to a boil in how many minutes? I think, uh... Or just like have it come to a boil? Okay, and then we'll add our uh, bulala. We'll put the peppercorn in now? Okay. You don't want to put too much, but uh, maybe just a little bit, just to add a little, like, dark, you know, peppery taste to it. Maybe just like, like this much, okay? Ah. Uh. It's actually really, really heavy. Probably because of the, how massive the bone is. And the bone contains the marrow, which is like super, super tasty in the end. Okay, so we just added the, the patis. All right. So what we want to do after putting in the, the onions, the celery, the, the meat, you want to let it come to a boil and Let's let's sit for about three hours so all the flavors like start to interact with each other, and then in about three hours later, you want to put your potatoes, the bananas, and of course the corn, which is awesome. So, been waiting for three hours to finally let it cook, and now we're gonna add our potatoes, corn. Initially, I thought you put the bananas with this on, but you gotta take the skin off. All right. These small bananas in the States, we actually call it like plantains, and you fry it, and you can make something like Tyrone or something. That's it for about 10 minutes. All right, cover it up, come back in 10, ten minutes. So we've been waiting for about 10 minutes with all the potatoes and the corn. You wanna add your Baguio beans, which locally they're called bichuelas. So these will uh, boil for about three minutes, two to three minutes, however you like it. And at the very last minute, you're gonna, before serving, you're gonna add your ketchup. Mmm, it smells so good. I'm getting hungry. Okay, almost done. Imagine we've been cooking for four hours, almost four hours. We had the time of the market and coming here and everything. All right, this looks great. It's not that hard to see why Tagai Tai remains to be the top destination to have a quick weekend getaway. Aside from the fact that it is perfectly situated near the city, it also has an irresistible charm that makes the people keep on coming back to this lovely place. <laughs>